What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about the console app that comes with UAD. This is a follow-up video of my overview of the Apollo Twin X Duo Quad Core. I will link that down in the description. So let's go ahead and dive into the console app. I'm going to show you around the console app, showing you how to use certain knobs and special features that come with UAD that makes it so incredible. So let's go ahead and start with the actual channel strip. So I have the Apollo Twin, which is only two inputs. Um, there is the Apollo with four inputs, and then we have the rack mount, which I believe it's eight inputs. Um, so depending on which one you have, you're going to have more inputs. So here I have two inputs, analog one, two, and two virtual inputs, which I have it linked together. All right, so let's dive into the channel strip. Here I have the channel strip number two, which is where I have my mic connected because I usually have my guitar on high Z, uh, which is when you plug in your quarter inch cable into the front part of the device where the guitar input is. We're going to go through the channel strip from top to bottom. So the first thing we see up here is the input level. If I actually, I can actually switch that by clicking the button on the device. And as you can see, the green light changes. And the knob, the big knob in the center, controls the input volume. So whatever I do here, you will see it change on the device as well. Uh, you could also change the input source so you can have a mic input and you can have a line input i'm going to demonstrate here on channel one so if i click on the device input it switches to a line input and then i can switch it back to a mic input you would want to use the mic input for a microphone of course and you would want to use a line input for let's say a keyboard moving along we have the unison which we're going to talk about uh, later on in the video we have the input section here which is the same thing that i just did but you can do it on the console by clicking on the mouse and it will change as well on the device we have a phantom power pad reverse polarity and a low cut or high pass all these parameters can be changed on the unit so if you like a more tactile uh, kind of experience then you would do you know, pressing the buttons on the unit. If you like clicking with a the mouse, then you would do it on the console app. Me personally, I like the tactile. So that makes it a very uh, neat feature to have on the actual unit and not have to click on a mouse. Below that, we have the insert section. So the insert section is where you would put your compressors, EQs, and any other processing you would want to do to enhance your recording. Below that, we have our aux 1, aux 2, which is shown over here on the right side. So here you would place your delays, your reverb, and you could choose to send however much signal and however little signal you want to send through the aux inputs here. You could choose to mute it in case you just want to hear the dry signal. And then below the aux, we have the headphones and then lines 3 and 4. So below that we have our pan pot and we have our solo and mute button and then our fader. One thing that's worth noting is the console app works in a very special way. It works just like you would in a high end studio where you have a console in front of you and then whatever you're tracking on the console will go into the DAW. So this will happen before your DAW. So any effects that you put here, it will be before going into the DAW, which allows you a lot more flexibility to shape your tone to record it. And again, the Unison technology is going to be the game changer here. So now that we've already hit this point, let's talk about the Unison technology. So the Unison technology allows you to use a guitar amplifier or a preamp to go before your signal inside of your DAW which is pretty awesome because usually in a studio you would go through a preamp whether it's on the console or outboard gear and you could then record the sound of that analog gear into Pro Tools, Logic or any doll that you use. So let me go ahead and pull up the UA610 so you could see it. So this is an actual analog emulation of the 610 uh, preamp which allows you to control the two preamplifier. You could go up by five and 10. You could control some EQ here, so you can boost these frequencies or these low frequencies. You could change the impedance if it's a line input. You could change it from 2K to 500. And you also control the level of the preamp here. And you can also control the output gain here. 
You can reverse polarity and you can also put a fifth negative 15 pad on it, right? And a pad is just a way to, if it's the, the signal's too loud, you enable the pad and it's going to lower it by 15 decibels. That way you can really pump some sound into the preamp and raise the levels here. So this is the game changer here. You're actually using an analog. It's like if you're using analog gear and it really makes your, your sound come out a lot warmer and a, with a lot more high grade studio quality sound. All right, so we're gonna talk about the buttons over here on the side. So here we have the overview, which allows you to see um, the entire channel strip. If I hit inputs, you're only gonna see what's going into your input. So you can see the input level, the unison, and then you could see whether it's microline and then all these parameters here. If I go to inserts, here I have, again, you could see the uh, e equalizers, you could see compressors, you can see any anything you have processing the signal, you could see it here. So down here we see a red and blue light. And what this means is you can either record your in inserts into the signal, into Pro Tools or Logic, and you're gonna get that sound that you had in mind when you were creating your inserts by EQing and compressing. If you're not too sure, or you're not sure if that's the final sound you're looking for, you wanna leave that in monitor, because what that's gonna do is it, you're gonna be able to hear what you put on it, compressors, EQs, but it won't record it into the signal. If I hit insert here, you're going to hear the recorded signal with the inserts an EQ, compressors, you know, you name it, whatever you put on your on your signal chain, you're gonna hear it recorded onto your signal. So if it's blue, that means you're you're only monitoring it. So you can hear it, but it's not being recorded. And then when it's red, that means it's being recorded and you will hear it during playback. This is very useful if you have a final sound. So I'm gonna teach you how to save uh, certain, you know, uh, presets if you want for your guitars or your vocals. That way you don't have to turn it on and then have to find those settings again. You could just save it and that way you save a lot of time, not only when you're starting to track, but also when you're doing your mixing, you save a lot of time by not doing all the processing in the mixing stage. So you can also find these buttons over here on the right side. So where it says insert effects, it does the same thing except it controls all of the uh, faders and inputs over here on this side. Or you can go ahead and click them individually by clicking either input one or analog one or analog two. All right, so down here in the bottom left corner, you could see a solo button, right? So this is a clear section, kind of like on a console. If let's say we have these four channels, we have them soloed. You can clear it by pressing solo here. And if you have signals that clip, Instead of going one by one and clicking each clip, you would just hit clips and it'll remove all the red uh, clipping signals here. So down below here, we can see our tempo. We can see our rate that we're recording in. So 44.1, which is CD quality. And if you're doing film work, it's usually at 48. And here we have our clock, which it says internal. So UAD is handling the clock speed here. To the right here, we have our show button. So here we can click off so we don't see our aux channels. Here we have the control room. So the control room is the talkback function. So remember in the overview video, I said that there was a talkback function. This is where you can control and also send to where you want to hear the talkback. So you can even send this to auxes if you want to. Headphones and then lines three and four. So right below this, we have the Q inputs, which is your headphones. So you can change the source here from headphones to mix. You can hear it in mono, and then the same thing here for lines three and four. Outputs, we can either choose to hear our output, which is what's coming out of our monitor in mono, or you can mute. And again, these buttons are found on the device. So if I go ahead and hit mute, you see this will turn on here. And if I go ahead and put mono, you'll see that it lights up here. And I'm doing this all from the Apollo device. The monitor input is if I'm using my monitor, instead of turning the knob on the monitor, you could see that I'm turning it with a knob. Or you can do it physically on the computer. I choose, again, the tactile version. So I do it all on the device. And then here we have the session. So the session is when, let's say, you create a preset. 
and you want a vocal chain. It's gonna the name of the vocal chain is gonna come here. So I have John vocal chain or John guitar chain, and the name will appear here. So if I want to see what chains I have, so here I have a chain for my guitar, and here I have a vocal chain, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create a preset here. So let's just go back to the overview section. And on this input, because again, I'm on two, I don't want to affect the signal here because that's what I'm speaking through. I'm going to create a, a preset. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, Poltec EQ. Uh, let's put a compressor. All right, let's just say I'm happy with this. I'm going to go up here to menu and I'm going to hit save. All right, since this is a new uh, a preset, I could put save and it's going to automatically prompt me to rename it. And if this is a preset that I already have, then you want, want to click save as and then name it as whatever you want to call it. That way you don't override the preset that you've already had previously. So you hit save. And here you're going to see it's saved to a folder called sessions in your UAD folder and you can name it whatever you want. So now when you hit sessions here, I can open up my guitar chain and it's going to tell me if I want to save as obviously I'm not going to do it right now because then it's going to affect the audio quality, but it'll go ahead and open up your presets. All right. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the settings menu down here in the left side. This is where you can set up anything with your hardware so you can see the sample rate the clock source and anything else you would want to change here you have the IO matrix which pretty much you could change how your inputs and outputs are called um, or change them to whatever it is that you know fits your workflow and here we have the display you can if you want to change any parameters there the plugin list. So here you can actually hide any plugins that you do not own. That way, when you open up the plugin uh, in your inserts or in the Unison, you don't see a bunch of plugins that you don't own, just the ones that you do own. And then here you can control any MIDI information. So that's it for the console app. If you have any questions, please drop your comments down below. If you like this video, hit the like button, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I will see you all soon.